I feel like a lot of being anxious is like looking for someone to like fill your cup. Mm. And it's like, you need to fill your own. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, why aren't they doing this? They need to give me more attention or they need to, they're not doing this. Like they don't like me enough, but it's like, no, you don't like yourself enough. Mm. Hey y'all, welcome back to Made It Out. A few weeks ago, we had a conversation about avoidant attachment styles and you guys asked about anxious ones. So I'm here with Grayson (laughs) to talk about Wait, that avoided is... attachment styles. My girlfriend's gonna love that <laughs> intro. Like that's so funny. So we brought in the expert. Grayson's here. <laughs> here, yes. Uh, you hey. guys probably know her from TikTok. We are also stand up. Mm-hmm. But most recently, you are known for being the one that got Julia Fox to come out of the closet. I did. I made her do it. She saw my video and she. I I mesmerized her and made her do it. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. It was so fucking random. Like, what did that feel? I've never had, like, a mega viral, like, moment like that. Yeah, I guess me neither. It was just really weird, like, all these news outlets, like, being, like, TikTok comedian Emily Grayson, (laughs) like, helped Julia. I'm like, what? Like, I wasn't. And when I made the, because I made a video about, like, I was like, I love seeing a lesbian with their boyfriend. Like basically like they don't know they're gay yet. Like, you know, like when you just see like a lesbian who's dating a twink yes. and you're like, you're both gay, like 100%. you're both each other's beards. It was like that. But anyways, I like didn't think anything of it and then it blew up and then she stitched it and then the rest is history. Did she ever reach out to you? <laughs> no, she was liking all of the videos I was making about it though because I would like see her notification but she wouldn't follow me back it's okay Julia oh my god <laughs> I know <laughs> I thought maybe she'd follow me back but no you would think that's yeah. kind of weird kind of like to thank for your coming out but it's like <laughs> no I'm kidding, I'm kidding but yeah crazy iconic yeah she's okay queen, though. well tell me where do you come from okay what's your upbringing um, like I'm from Florida, South Florida. I'm half Cuban and Jewish. What can I say? I like loved where I grew up. I grew up in like a really liberal, like melting pot of people, just like good vibe place. Uncommon for Florida. Really uncommon and uncommon in general, which I didn't realize until I went to college and I would like, cause I like loved high school. I had like a good time and I would like talk, which is like also uncommon. I feel like for gay people. So I do Mm. feel lucky to have had that experience. But when I went to college, everyone would just be like, I fucking hated school, like high school. I hated my hometown. And I was like, Oh my God, I actually hate all of you. And like, (laughs) I wish I was back in my hometown because I have a lot of friends who like went to high school in like really conservative towns Mm -hmm. where like they were like banned from like bringing like the same gender to prom like that was like not allowed but like at my school there were like mask lesbians in suits oh wow bringing their girls to prom like it was like normal I think that's literally the first time I've heard that on this yeah it was crazy so like I I do feel really like lucky for that and like when I came out just to like get into it but when I came out in high school like everyone was like really cool about it and like so you knew early on that you were gay I knew I started figuring it out Well, okay. My friends laugh at me for this because I always say that I started figuring it out my freshman year of high school, but then I like high key, like ate this girl out when I was seven, (laughs) (laughs) but I didn't think it was gay. Like, (laughs) of course not. Like, I don't know. Like I wasn't like, Oh, I'm gay. I was just like, this is just something we're kind of doing together. I just love to do this, (laughs) but it was her idea. Okay. Okay, okay, you're right. <laughs> and I was like, it just was like playing the game that she set up for me. And I wasn't like, oh, I'm gay. It was just like, this is just fun. Yeah. Um, but th- there were multiple girls too. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was a couple. And Wow, so then it became your game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back. <laughs> Tell me about your relationship with your parents. I don't know how we're going to segue that one. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I actually don't have a good relationship with either. Well, okay. 
my mom I more than my dad. Um, I have a brother who I like don't talk to at all. And then, yeah, like, I don't know. My dad is very emotionally avoidant. He just mm -hmm. like has been my whole life. And so it's, he's just like hard to be close to. Mm -hmm. I know he really loves me and like cares about me. He just like is so man, like doesn't know how to show it. Like is not like I was just my birthday and he like, he got me a card and he, it's just like, love dad. But it's like, aw. aw. But it's yeah. like, you don't know how to express yourself, King. Right. Which is like, fine, but also really damaging. Something about that generation of men. Yeah, bad. Like, I feel like my dad is probably one of the more in touch with his emotions, but still has a really hard time expressing them. Yeah. I actually wrote a whole paper in college about like, it's just like we're, we socialize them to like be like be a man like don't cry like they're taught to kind of be that way mm -hmm. so it's like you almost can't blame them I, part of me feels bad for men yeah but i also just like hate them so much yeah at the same I, time. I lack that empathy for them yeah <laughs> that's fair that's fair <laughs> but it's like yeah they're they're kind of just like taught to be that way and then they have like all this pent up aggression and it's like, they don't know how to, and like pent up emotions and they just like don't know how to express it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, my dad, not close with him. My mom, she's around, she's yeah. more around. I think both of my parents um, shouldn't have had kids. Oh my God. <laughs> like they're that just like, they don't know how to like be parents yeah I, mean, I do feel bad because if they hear this i love you guys thanks for bringing me into the world but <laughs> like i don't know they just they're not i think like i have friends who have parents who are like very nurturing and very mm -hmm. like if they have an issue it's like we're gonna help you and we're gonna this is what we're gonna do to fix it and like my parents like if i had an issue when i was little it'd be like what are you gonna do <laughs> like <laughs> How like are you going to fix it? Yeah. <laughs> like, you gonna work this what are you going to do? Um, but I do also think it kind of, my parents, both of their parents are um, immigrants. Mm -hmm. And so, well, my mom's actually an immigrant. So they're both immigrants. But like, I don't know, they have, they both have like a lot of trauma from that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that they just didn't, I think like they, their parents didn't really know how to be parents. So then like, I'm learning in therapy, like they're doing the best with what they knew. Like totally. they didn't really know anything else. And I think that it kind of just trickled down. It just keeps trickling down. Yeah. Um, but I'll be the generation to stop that because I don't want to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fair. We're covering everything. I like, love it. This is, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, never say never. Yeah. But I don't think I do. That's fair. Yeah. I think we're like old enough to be at a point where we have some grasp of understanding. Of, like, right. Does that look like what I want my life to look like or no? Right. And it's like probably not <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's like, yes, for me. But then the closer it gets, it's like, are we sure? Yeah, <laughs> that's real. Um, so would you say that both of your parents toward you were more like avoidant? Yeah. I'm like currently working through this in therapy, but I think that it was a lot of like avoidance and like rejection. Mm. I think that like really damaged me in a way that I'm just now unpacking. But basically my dad, um, is a lawyer and he had his own, firm and he worked in our house and so he had like an office but it wasn't like soundproof so we would like every time we were like in our house he'd be like coming out being like I'm on the phone like everyone shut up like mm. it was constantly like shh like I'm working and it's like okay king like you should probably work somewhere else like not in <laughs> Get an our office. house yeah like <laughs> it's my can, playroom like can you leave like I'm six anyways so it was just a lot of like go away, I'm working, like stop talking. Mm -hmm. So I think that always made me feel really rejected and really like, I can't be myself here. Like this yeah. isn't a space for me to be myself. And then my parents had a really like bad relationship and they were like constantly fighting. Um, and so I think that 
my mom was so caught up in that, that like, I just, I feel like me and my brother were just like very neglected emotionally because like they were just going through so much and we were just kind of existing there. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably why I'm so anxious. (laughs) Um, And also because like when you grow up with a parent that's like extremely reactive, like my dad was like, super aggressive and reactive you develop this like oh my god I'm so scared to step on anyone's toes Mm -hmm. like let me just tiptoe around everyone because I don't want to like annoy anyone ever like I don't want anyone to like get mad at me so it's like how I'm gonna like people please and act exactly the way you want me to because I'm scared of like you getting mad at me well also like almost you have to earn right that as well like and that becoming normalized, like I can only like earn love. Like it's not just like given to me. Like I have to act a certain way. It's like being so aware of the outward perception instead of like Mm -hmm. how you're feeling from the inside or how you want to operate in the world. It's how does everybody else want me to operate for sure. And that's like a huge issue I have like to this day where I'm just like, I don't trust my own judgment. I am constantly seeking external validation because I feel like I was kind of like inadvertently taught that like what I, any like way I like naturally am is like wrong. So I'm like looking for like someone else to like validate that what I'm doing is correct. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's just, it's a disgusting way to live. Like with, with what I do, like I've been a TikToker for like four years. And like, my dad is constantly calling me being like, can you get another job? Like he like, doesn't want, like, he's like, you need to apply at Macy's. Like what? Like he's always telling me to apply at Macy's. I'm like, what are you talking about? Literally, what are you talking about? Has he been to Macy's in like 15 years? I don't fucking know. Like I literally don't know her. Like, just, okay, let's just go down this road really quick. What would you do at Macy's? I like sell clothes, I guess. I think I would run the makeup counter. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, well, my dream job at Macy's <laughs> would be like the head. Okay. That's like, not what I meant. Like, <laughs> like I, I thought you were down to say go work in the store. No, he is. That's what okay. he said. <laughs> That is what he's saying. But like, maybe like I could be the manager of a floor of one floor. Okay. <laughs> I'm easy. I'm easy if you're hiring hit me up. No, I'm kidding. Please don't. Um, well, if you want to do like a brand deal, like we could yes, do that. Yes, Macy. Yeah. Um, I feel like some maybe parents don't realize that certain things like that could be like they're doing it because they care, but it's like it can be super damaging, like the way they go about it. Mm-hmm. It's like, Cause it like you feel shut down and then you feel like they don't like believe in you. And it's like, can you just trust me for like a second? Well, it's like prioritizing their fear over True. like us figuring out who we authentically are. True. I think. And then I think that even furthers your ability to like trust yourself and your voice. Right. And do you feel like your attachment style is tied in any way to your experience of men, just like in the world? Maybe. I mean, okay, because I I feel like I've talked to a lot of my friends about them having to like unlearn, like seeking male validation. I don't think I ever like dealt with that because of like, I grew up super chubby and like, my whole life and I feel like I always felt like boys were like not looking my way like it was always like they're not interested and so that's also why I have a big aversion to men because I'm like you're all pigs Mm -hmm. and you're disgusting weirdly enough that made me just be like okay fuck them like it wasn't it didn't make me like want to chase after them more Mm. but see but maybe at the same time it made me chase like maybe that made me feel unwanted. And so I carry that even with women where like, I still feel like somewhere deep inside, like unwanted. Right. And so that makes me anxious. Cause I'm like, do you like me? Like whatever, like, am I attractive to you? 
But like with men, no, to answer your question. Cause like, well, it's almost like just a societal thing, right? Like yeah, fitting true. into just society's view of what is wanted or right desired or whatever. Totally. So it's like, it's almost like you can't get away from that. Even yeah. if it's like this one layer of like, oh, well, I'm not going to ch- actively chase men in my life. It's right. still like, well, society has this whole like undertone. Right. I feel like I also grew up not like, I wasn't like a big kid, but I wasn't thin. I've always been that like medium, you right. know, like not skinny, not big enough to be like, people are like, you're not fat, shut the fuck up. Or right. You're, you're not real thin but you don't feel like you fit in still like right yeah i, I still don't that. like how i look yeah and that's I how i always way. felt yeah and i also grew up with like a total granola mom like marathon runner so tiny so cute mm. and i compared myself a lot to her and so i just grew up like very conscious and like aware of body like from a very young age right and i think especially growing up in like the texas culture it made me want to chase that like you are going to like me. And like, I even worked in environments that like I worked in strip clubs. I worked in nightclubs. I worked in all those places where you're like very much using your body as a way to like make money, but also like, it's like a validation thing as well. Not saying that that's what all girls there do, but me personally, when I got hired at those places, I was like, Oh, I'm pretty enough to make it in the door. It was like this, check mark thing of right. I don't know like seeking that outward validation right so I think it kind of made me go the opposite way okay that but makes still sense anxious. still yeah. okay but it's the opposite but then it's like almost the same like I feel because deep down like you still were like felt unwanted exactly right so it's like all like I don't know where I would like, I feel like it all just leads to the same. It's just like a circle. Yes. Yeah. What do you feel like your tendencies are in relationships? Like your anxious tendencies? Um, What do you do? That's crazy. Okay. Let me think. (laughs) Should I FaceTime my girlfriend? No, I'm kidding. Um, Well, well, let me think of fights we get into. (laughs) Okay. Because my brain right now is like, I'm perfect. I don't do anything. What do you mean? Of course. Um, No, it's very like, Okay, so basically, like, with my girlfriend, like, in the beginning, we were, like, kind of having trouble understanding each other. Like, she, we both can be avoidant, but I think she's, like, leans more avoidant. And, like, she would, like, text me, like, really dry. And, like, that's so silly. But I'd just be like, hello, like, do you even like me? Um, and so like, I would like comment on it. I'd be like, you need to like put like more emojis. Like when you text me, like, like she'd just be like, hi, like, can you be like, Hey, like light of my life. Like, you know what I mean? Like you need to kind of like do the most heart, heart. Yeah. Like world. Or like if I like posted like a selfie and she just like liked like the story, it's like, you need to like swipe up and be like dying. Like, (laughs) But so basically, like, there were just, like, little things like that. And I feel like I would just, like, pick at things. And then it got to the point where she was finally, like, I feel like nothing I do is good enough for you. Mm. And I was, like, because I've heard that from everyone I've ever dated. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I had, like, a whole breakthrough where I was, like, I'm the problem. Oh, my God. (laughs) Because I was, like, because this was, like, beginning and, like, at first, like, I was just like, I don't, maybe this won't work out. Like I was like, kind of like self-sabotaging, like she's the problem. She's not doing enough. Like she like really values her like autonomy, which is like amazing. Secure. Like, yeah, she's like, yeah, it's <laughs> secure even. Yeah. And like, I feel like also lesbians, like relationships really like glorify the, like, we're going to be attached at the hip 24 mm-hmm. seven. So then when she wasn't that, And she was like actually just being kind of normal and healthy about like how much we see each other. My head was like, what the fuck? Like, I deserve more than that. Like, I deserve. But it was like my anxiousness just wanting like more and more and more. And then finally, when she said that to me, I just like had a breakthrough because I was like, that's true. Like, it is true. Like, she could go to the end of the earth and like find me like she could like go like 
wait, why is this what I thought of? But (laughs) she could like go like mining and like get... (laughs) I don't know why this is what I thought. And get like find me a fucking gem that she like mined herself. Uncut. Yeah. Uncut. <laughs> and I'd be like, well, you just got like I would just find something. I'd be like, well, like, well, now I'm making myself sound ungrateful. I am grateful, but I just would like find something. Yeah. And basically I just realized it was like me self-sabotaging and like I feel like that's how I'm anxious. And it was a lot of me, like I tried to like change her a lot. Mm. And so now that was like six months ago. Now I like accept her for who she is. And I just like let her do her thing and she lets me do my thing. But we, sometimes we still have like, I'm like, you need to throw in an, um, an emoji. Like you need to yeah. throw in a new emoji. Yeah, I have this tendency that when Matilda is just like a little bit more quiet or like I can tell that her energy is like down or has shifted I'm like oh are we good yeah. like at, what you what hate did me? I do yeah <laughs> like oh oh this is yeah. we're fucked yeah you know? and like oh so I'm moving out tonight <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah I, that's I totally get it yeah and it's like this weird thing of not knowing how not to internalize her emotions and just let her go through her own journey and I think that's one that I still actively struggle with and haven't been able to like figure out or come out of or like why that's even a thing. Yeah, it is. It's really hard. Like it's hard not to take it personally, especially when like, uh, people handle things differently. Like my girlfriend was like upset about something and she like really, I To me, it felt like she was icing me out, Mm. but she wasn't. She was just like going through her own shit. Going through her own shit. And Mm -hmm. it like had nothing to do with me at all. But are you Um, more of the communicator? Like when when something's wrong with you, do you communicate that? Yes. See, that's how I am too. Right. And and also when she's like upset about something, like she wants to process that like by herself. But there have been And I can relate to that too, because sometimes I could be like that, but also there have been times where I'm really upset and all I want to do is like go cuddle with her. Like that's, that's my comfort is to Mm. like be with her, but her comfort is like self-soothing and like being alone. And that's part of her own childhood stuff. Yeah. But, um, I feel like it, it's easy to kind of take that personally. Like when someone wants to like self soothe and be like, well, so you hate me and I'm not like useful to you. Like, what do you mean? Like I can't make you feel better, but it's like not about if you're able to make them feel better. It's like, they're just trying to make themselves feel better. Right. Like their process is just different. Yeah. Which is like not about us. It's hard to think (laughs) that people don't think exactly like me. (laughs) <laughs> no period the end no literally the end yeah I don't get it when I when we first kind of had one of those situations I like almost didn't believe her like it was like no you just hate me no and now they're you convincing just us. now they were already in a bad mood yeah and now they're convincing us right that everything is fine yeah and then it's like then you feel bad about that because it's like they were just trying to like go through their stuff and now we like made it about ourselves and it like had nothing to do with us it's like that meme of did you vanderpump are you for me no i didn't watch it there's this meme of sheena and it's like just me making things about me again. <laughs> no, I'm con- the anxious people. Yeah, I'm making everything about me constantly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. We're not selfish. We're just anxious attachers. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on a t-shirt. Right. No, literally. <laughs> it's like a curse of like being a Leo. I also think because it's like everything is like the biggest deal in the world. And I'm like really, I am very dramatic. So I have to like talk myself down from it like I have to be like let me I think that's part of the anxious attachment I do the same thing it's like catastrophizing yes it's like everything blows up really big Mm -hmm. like even to this day with Matilda and I there we're not going anywhere everything is you know right pretty like it's solid we're good yeah but it's like I'll catastrophize and it's like why am I doing this and usually I'm on my period And we're, those tendencies are coming back, you know, and it's like, but yeah, it's this place of just like, 
you go yeah. to the worst place. And it's like all like I'm I, I had to teach myself that it's like not that my feelings aren't valid, like they're valid, but I also feel like a lot of it, it's like made up. Like I like mm. make these big scenarios in my head like that, like she doesn't care about me and like she doesn't like love me. And it's like she's shown me like she couldn't she couldn't be showing me more how much she loves me. Like she really does show up. And sometimes I feel bad about this because it's like my own craziness clouds mm-hmm. what that how much she loves me and I like make myself think that she doesn't and then I feel like in the past I try I don't do this with her but I had done this with like ex-partners where like I'll really villainize people like mm-hmm. I'll be like they're fucked like they need to be doing more like fuck them like they're treating me like shit. And it's like the whole time they're doing everything they can. And like, I'm trying to find reasons why they don't love me. And it all stems back to me deep down feeling like undeserving of love. So I'm trying to like prove, I'm trying to prove that. Yeah. You're trying to prove your own. Yeah. Like subconsciously, like I don't deserve this and this is why. And you're like treating me badly because that's what I deserve. Yeah. But it's like the whole time they're not even treating me. Like I have been treated badly, but also I can look back at situations and be like, okay, I definitely blew that up. And like, yep. they didn't really even do anything that wrong. I feel <laughs> like I had to be with a lot of bad people that I could like make the narrative. Like you're the asshole, you're the asshole. I'm perfect, you're the fucking problem. Right. And then once you get with someone who's secure, like really secure, then you're faced with it and you're like, oh, like I, you're really faced with it. Like I really am the fucking problem. Right. Like my pattern kind of stopped, but now that I'm in the relationship I'm in, it's like, oh, I gotta fucking shape up because you're not putting up with my right shit anymore. And it's crazy how you can, like the, perspective that you can have on like a situation like for example like because when you were saying the secure thing like it made me think about how my girlfriend is really we see each other I see her probably like five out of seven days in the week like that's a good (laughs) amount but I guess maybe like in the beginning no it was still that much but like I I was like finding like being like, well, the two days, like she doesn't want to see me for two days. Like what the fuck? But that's like so normal. Like, thank God. Like, thank God she like likes to like decompress alone. Like that's really healthy. Like I'm (laughs) glad that she like values her alone time. Like that's awesome. But in the beginning, like I did semi villainize her for that. It was like, what? Like I deserve someone who wants to be with me constantly. (laughs) Every second. Every every second. Like, what do you mean? Like you want the day alone? Like, excuse me. But it's like, wait, like the way I twisted that in my head is crazy. Cause it's like, no, that's actually like so good. Yeah, like that's healthy. so healthy. But my anxious, like wanted to find an issue with that yeah. when it's actually now I can look at that and be like, that's really positive. I mean, I think that when I really, I used to not be able to be alone. I was like so anxious that I like, I would kind of would jump relationships and then after the first girl I was with, when I realized like, okay, I'm, I'm, par- I'm actually part of the problem. I took a really long time to just be alone. And I think it really helped me because I really think that like we were saying earlier at the, at the root of all of this is like a lack of self-worth and love. And so the only way to like get through that is to teach yourself how to give yourself those things. Yes. And so it's like, I think that's why coming out was a big part of me starting to figure out my attachment style because it was like self-acceptance right? and being like, okay, like here, here's a part of who I am. I accept who I am. And I think that's kind of a snowball. Like once you accept something really big about yourself like that, then it's like, okay, well fine. Then I can accept that I, you know, don't like other things that people like, or like, like just being different in general, you know, you can be okay with that. And then like, learning how to love yourself for what you've accepted is like a a different level. You know, it's like, okay, well now I actually think it's pretty cool that I'm gay and it's cool that I like to, you know, do these different things. And, and then it's like care, like being in tune with 
here are the routines that make me feel good. And like, I don't know, I think it's really just this whole thing of turning inward and learning yourself and liking yourself and taking care of yourself and like all of those things. And then those behaviors set you up for when you are in a relationship, having these like little spirally moments, it's like, okay, hold on. I just need to like go for a walk. I need to like listen to the music. I like do some mushrooms, be outside, like whatever that routine is for you. That's fine. Right. My highly recommend mushrooms, but like yeah. <laughs> if that is what you do, you just have to go do those things. And then you're like, okay, I'm back. My, I'm like my equilibrium is, is back. And like, I can come and approach this normal, you right. know? Yeah. And I, and I think a big, like, I'm not a psychologist, but I think like a big part of <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah, just letting everyone know. <laughs> I know you guys probably thought that based on my looks, but, um, no, but I think a big part of he- how I've healed my anxious tendencies and they're, they're not all healed. Like they're, they are here in the room with us, but, um, <laughs> some of them are dead. And I feel like it's because of like the taking care of your yourself part is Mm. like so important. Like I feel like a lot of being anxious is like looking for someone to like fill your cup Mm. and it's like, you need to fill your own. Like it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter who you're with or what you're doing. Like you have to do it for yourself. And I feel like the anxious part is just like not fully understanding that it's Mm -hmm. like, why aren't they doing this? They need to give me more attention or they need to, they're not doing this. Like they don't like me enough, but it's like, no, you don't like yourself enough. Mm. You need to like give that to yourself. (laughs) Give yourself a hug. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like really real. And also like when my girlfriend was like, I feel like nothing I do is good enough. She was like giving me advice even like she was like, I do feel like you're looking for me to like give you things that like, I really think that you need to look inward and like give yourself. She's like, I really care about you, but like you need to like take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) And then I was like, wait, she's right. I'm like even thinking about this because Matilda and I, like working with your partner is such a new, like just like added kind of challenge and you learn each other in such different ways. And it's been a challenge for me just because I feel sometimes like I don't bring as much to the table as she does. She does a lot for our business. You know, she like runs all of the posts and all of like, she's the engine. And sometimes I feel like I maybe undervalue what I bring to the table, but then I project that onto her. Like you undervalue me or you do this, but it's like really, and I'm realizing that right now in real time. (laughs) 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 But it's like, you know, sometimes it helps to have these conversations and be like reminded of these things because even if you feel like I'm, I'm pretty, I would classify myself as pretty secure now, like just with those anxious kind of tendencies. But I think as you grow and evolve into new spaces and when you're uncomfortable is when these tendencies come back, you know, it's like, because you're outside of your comfort zone or what you feel good in. And so I think it's like, even just like refreshing like this and hearing that is helpful Cause now it's like, oh yeah, okay. I just need to go build up my confidence in this space and feel good about and value myself and what I bring to the table. And then yeah, it'll I've had better. actually that like same problem, not, not same situation, but just like my girlfriend like does, has like done a lot for me, like has helped me a lot. And like, she like, oh, your dog no. so <laughs> cute. Hi. <laughs> Wait, so cute. Oh my God. (laughs) He's locked in the room. Uh, I love dogs. Okay. Um, No, but like, she like changed my whole apartment. Like she helped me like redo my whole apartment. Like she like re gave me a whole new skincare routine. Like she just very like has like fixed me up. But then like one day I was like, oh my God, like what do I like? What have I changed for her? Like I haven't done, like, I don't Mm. have anything that I could like, she has like a lot of her shit figured out. Right. And so then I started being like, Oh my God, like, is she going to like grow to resent me? Because like, she's done all this stuff for me. And like, what do I even do? And then I think I was talking about it to my friend And my friend was like, well, you like you love her and you like support her. And like she's not looking for you to do those things like she's looking for what like what you bring to the table. And that's like this, this and that like they can be different things. Right. And I feel like 
it's easy to project that like insecurity onto them yeah. and be like, I've had that. I've had this conversation with my therapist about just like knowing that maybe what you value and what they bring to the table and what you've needed in a partner is not the same as what they need in a partner. Right. And that's why. And that's why you go together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look at us. Really? If you need a relationship yeah, help, we're kind we're of here. really figuring this out. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at today? <laughs> um, no. Okay. So in there, I have this really good therapist now and she's like just everything. Like she like, she like almost bullies me, but like in a good way, like she just like like drags shit out of me. Like anything I say, she'll be like, well, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. And like, she just like interrogates me basically, but it's really good because. So basically I'm realizing that like this whole time, like my whole personality, no, not my whole personality, but it's always (laughs) just been like, I'm really anxious. Yeah. And I always attract avoidant people because I'm anxious. And now I'm realizing like, I'm always attracting avoidant people because I'm avoidant because it all stems from not feeling worthy of love. And I feel like that all manifests like it can manifest in an anxious way or it can manifest in an avoidant way, because in an anxious way, it's like you're chasing them because you feel like unworthy and you're trying to like get them to like fulfill that you are worthy, Mm -hmm. but then being avoidant is pushing them away because you feel unworthy. It just like manifests differently. It's a lack of self-love manifested in different ways. But it's like all rooted in the same thing, like being anxious and being avoidant. Like when I was casually dating, I was so avoidant. Like it was like, I would find an issue with everyone like, I'd be like, I don't like her laugh. Like, or like, I don't like, she like looked at me weird. Like literally like the dumbest shit ever. Like I would, was a huge ghoster. Oh, sorry, everyone. (laughs) It wasn't that many people. If Grayson ghosted you, put it in the comments. (laughs) They're, oh no. Okay. Um, No, but yeah. But also me ghosting people was like, me being so avoidant because I couldn't, it was me being like cowardly. Like I couldn't just straight up tell them that I didn't want to like see them anymore because I felt so bad. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just avoid them. Yeah. Like, oh my God. I I was actually just talking about this with my friend. So I, I was seeing this girl who were like, we're like friendly now. So if she sees this, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, but long story short, we were like, like casually seeing each other. And then we were at this party, but I had, I came with my ex because we had like reconnected. And so I was like really praying that that girl wouldn't be there because like every time I'd see her out, it'd be like, she's always going to be there. I know. That's the thing. (laughs) Yeah. And like every time we'd see each other out, it's like, we're going to go home together. But like, I'm with my ex right now, so I can't. This is the most lesbian story ever. Yeah, it's bad. But (laughs) this was really bad. And like, it's funny because in the moment, I really thought that this was like going to be like a good process. But so basically, like, I knew she was there. And I was like, I'm just gonna like, pretend I didn't see her. No. Oh my God. If I'm that girl, I'm walking straight up to you. I'm squaring you in the eye. I know. It was just like, I just didn't look at her. Look at (laughs) me. Look. Um, Yeah. So I just like pretended she wasn't there the whole time. (laughs) That was it. (laughs) But that was like so mean. But it was like, it's so funny because, well, it's not funny. It was mean. But like on my end, like on her end, I could obviously see why she'd be like, what a fucking dick. Like what an, like that's so like heartless, like and mean. But on my end, like I was, I felt so bad Mm -hmm. that I couldn't even face it. Like, and it was, it was, it wasn't coming from a place of like, fuck her. Like, I don't, I don't care about her. It was like, I cared. So I like, couldn't even look at her. Yeah. So it's like, but it like manifested in such a like asshole way. <laughs> oh, um, so I feel like I could be avoided in that way. It's like avoiding confrontation or avoiding like feelings, like yeah. avoiding like feeling bad or like make avoiding making someone upset. 
then it like manifested in like being an asshole. Do you feel like you've gotten better with that? Because like that experience I would think would teach you like just be upfront. I've gotten better, but I'm, I'm still, I'm still like, I think I'm scared of confrontation going back to my childhood with mm. my dad. Like, I think yeah. I'm just like, I don't want to upset anyone. And so I tried and just like tiptoe out of shit yeah. and like run away from it. But it's like funny. Cause like running away, it sounds anxious, but it's actually avoidant. I don't know. I think they're all the same. Yeah. Like it's all the fucking same <laughs> shit. I don't fucking know. Um, in conclusion. Yeah. In conclusion, it's love yourself. <laughs> in conclusion, we're all insecure. I don't know. Um, yeah. Okay. Tell me more about your therapist. What are you working on in therapy? Oh my God. My therapist is the best. What? Do, um, well, actually I like was in therapy for not a while, like on and off for the past, like, I don't know, four years, but like, I've never cried. I had, I had never cried in therapy cause it just didn't feel like that's where I can be kind of avoiding. Cause I was just like, absolutely not. Like, yeah, I'll die before I do that. Oh, wow. But now she's getting it out of me. Aww. And so I like cried about my dad the other day. <gasps> Oh, I'm so was, happy for you because that's a release. Yeah, but it, it's really crazy. For a lot of my life, I like, like I knew I had like a, not a great childhood. Like it was very like, it's a very toxic environment the way I grew up. But I'd always just be like, yeah, but it didn't affect, like it's fine. Like yeah. I, like when I was little, like I knew my parents were going to get divorced. I would like ask my mom when I was little, like, when are you going to divorce dad? Like you should. Aww. And I like, just like knew it. Like it wasn't like they got divorced and I was like, no, like it just, so I always just in my head thought like, oh, that didn't bother me. Yeah. But it really, like I'm finally unpacking how much it did bother me. It's like, but it's so deep back there that I don't even, I'm not even aware of it. So when you really get into it in therapy, it's actually so crazy because you like, there's things about yourself that you don't even know. Like yeah. I started crying about like how I was like upset at him, at my dad for like creating that environment. And like, I didn't even know I felt that way. And it, I just started like sobbing and I was like, where is this coming from? Like, am I on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the power of therapy though, is like, you don't know what's not normal because right. what you grew up in is just so normal. Right. So then having someone to reflect it back, like sometimes I'll just be telling a story and my therapist will be like, oh, and I'll be like, oh yeah, that, that got you. Yeah. Like that was sad. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, my friends always make fun of me cause there's like a meme about like telling the most like um, traumatizing story and then being like, <laughs> like laughing about it after like, it's I do that all the, the time. trauma candy salad. Like yes. how everybody is going and they're like, ah, like this yeah. happened and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I brought the Skittles. I <laughs> tell my friends like the most traumatizing stories and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. But I'm like, not. <laughs> no, we're absolutely not. Yeah. We're dying over here. <laughs> uh, well, that's great. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. Love to hear a non crier cry. Yeah. And I hope that opened the floodgates and you're just like crying all the time. Yeah. I want to cry more yeah. now. I want to also, ugh, wait, I, I will like die if my therapist sees this. Why? No. Cause I want to say that she, I think she's really hot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you heard she it here first. See it. She won't see this. I hope not. Well, if she does see this, I don't think that anymore. You have a hot therapist. She's I don't so have a hot, hot therapist. Like my therapist is like older like I wanted like a motherly figure right that's real I didn't do it on purpose I like, could I not talk to like a hot therapist yeah it's really it was really hard at first I literally after the first session I called my girlfriend I was like she's really hot like I'm sorry and she was like why are you telling me this and I was like I just had to be real about it no but she thinks it's funny but um it was hard to cry in front of her also she has like crazy eyes like she just like oh she's intense she's in she's really intense yeah. so like like she'll just be like how do you feel about that and I'll be like 
I'll say some crazy, like I'm going off on a tangent, like I don't know. And she'll be like, no, tell me an emotion that you feel. And I'm oh, like, wow. holy fuck, bitch. Like, <laughs> but she's so good. But at first I was like, I'm being interrogated by like a really oh, hot God. person. All right. I feel like I just sound like a douchebag this whole time. I'm not what a hey mean? mama, as I <laughs> promise. I'm not a hey mama, seriously. <laughs> Like, my therapist is so hot. <laughs> like, it's so embarrassing. Uh, anyone else have a hot Cheers. therapist? <laughs> Cheers to your hot therapist. Uh, we play a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's called You Haul or You Ghost. Okay. Perfect in every way, except for maybe this, like, one little quirk. She's such a soccer fan that she will cry if her team loses. I feel like, well, I feel like I sound like a dick if I say, can I curse? Yes. Cool. Dick. Um, <laughs> fuck shit. Fuck shit. <laughs> um, uh, it depends on like what she looks like when she cries, I think. Oh, wow. That's where we're going. Like, if it's like, if it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, ew, like everyone's kind of uncomfortable. Oh, no. I'm going to ghost her. <laughs> Okay. But if it's like, oh, that's really sweet. Like she cares. Like a single tear. Yeah. It's like she's being chill about it. And it's just <laughs> like one little tear is coming down. That's that's sweet. Wow. Then I would U-Haul. Yeah. This is telling me a lot. It depends on her, just her vibe. Like she's like an obnoxious crier. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay. This is an absolute no for me. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I'll tell you why. So my therapist actually told me that sports, like men get so emotional at sports because right. that's like misplaced emotion that they're not expelling elsewhere. Wait, that makes sense. So to me, I'm like, girl, what are we not working on? Therapy? Yeah. What are you not journaling about yeah. queen? <laughs> True. I, when you asked, I started thinking about, I played basketball in high school and mm -hmm. like the girls who would like cry when they lost, I'd be like, can you get over? Like we're in, who cares? This is a high school basketball game. Like there's bigger fish to fry kind of. Yeah. Um, so like yeah. your life at home is too good. If yeah. this is what you're crying No. About. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> like my parents are divorced. I'm going to cry about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So so I'm ghosting. Uh, okay, I'll ghost. Okay. I'll ghost too. <laughs> All right. She's someone who treats everyone like a close friend when she meets them. Like upon meeting. Oh no, ghost. Same. I don't like Tell that. Me why. Because you have to like suss people out. I don't trust people who are like too like buddy buddy with everyone they meet. I'm like a like you have to crack me open and I feel like that makes me trustworthy. Cause like, yes, I, I don't like giving my energy like that to like people I don't know mm -hmm. unless I don't know. Sometimes there's just, there's just a vibe and it's yeah. like cool. But like I have gone in multiple times that people have thought that I didn't like them when we met because I, can't, <laughs> I have gone in that multiple times actually. Why do but, you think that is? Not to get into like astrology so quickly, but like I'm, <laughs> I'm a Scorpio rising and I feel like that makes me kind of like shut off at first. Yeah. But just because I need to like suss you out. And then mm -hmm. once I do it, then I'm like, I'm a Leo. So I'm like, really like, we Leo can get moon. into it. No, I'm a Leo sun. Okay. Sag moon. Okay. That's my big three. What's your big three? <laughs> I'm Gemini, Leo, Pisces. Okay. I knew you were a Gemini something. Oh, really? I love Gemini placements. Cause we could just like talk. Yeah. I feel like. Just talk. Unless, okay. Every once in a while there's that click. Yes. Where it's like, we just click. Right. And that's fine. But like, if we don't really have that, if I'm not feeling that and you like me too much, I'm like, you don't even know me. Right. Like vet me. Especially because the question was like with friends, mm -hmm. right? But like, especially with like dating. Like well, I, that's anxious attachment. Yeah, I hate, but I hate <laughs> that. Like you don't know me at yes. all. Go away. <laughs> wow, I'm glad we got through that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She's obsessively clean. That's my girlfriend. Oh yeah. <laughs> she's like, I call her Howie Mandel. <laughs> <laughs> like she's like crazy. So I, you haul. She's, she like, I have to, like if we're out, somewhere like I have to take a shower before I get, get into her bed she like is so weird about my phone in her bed like oh. so like wiped out my phone she's like get your dirty ass phone out of my bed and like I respect her for that good for her I just I don't operate that way 
but it's cool. Like, I wish I could be that way, but I just, I don't have the energy. I don't know how she that's, has the energy. That's what I'm sitting here thinking. Yeah, like, I'm laying in bed. I want to scroll. Yeah. No. With the clothes that I wore earlier. Yeah, no. She's like, take them off now. <laughs> like, she's like, no. So, yeah. Okay, you haul. I'm, I think you I'm you ghosting this one. I'm sorry to your girlfriend. That's really fair. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at mgraystog on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. I'm do I do stand up in LA. If you're in LA, follow me on Instagram to see when I when I have shows. And yeah, I had a podcast called Bin Gay Podcast, and we kind of took a hiatus. If if you're listening, we we may come back. I I'm not sure, but you should listen if we do come back. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> we just like randomly Love stopped doing our podcast. So yeah. All right. Yay. That's a wrap. Thank you all for listening to today's episode. As always, help us spread the gay agenda by writing an Apple review, rating us on Spotify, and sharing it with everyone you've ever met. Made It Out is produced and edited by Matilde Jordan and worked on solely by lesbians. You just made me squirt. That's never happened before. I think you're the one. <laughs>